Hello and welcome back to more Finnish Red Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. War last episode, we played through the or we yeah, we finished up the first investigation of uh Turnabout Time Traveler, which is the bonus DLC case of the game, and today we'll be heading to travel for the first time. And it's time travel. Oh, let's just get started. I we're hoping it's not gonna be time trial tri time trial? Time travel, but you know. What? We'll, we'll deal with it. We'll deal with whatever comes about as we get to it. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Ellen. I see you're still wearing your wedding gown. I will continue to wear it until my marriage is saved. Bow, Soren! Do you think you came to see how she's holding up? Soren, my love, you're about to get beat with my frying pan. You came all the way down to the corner just to see me. Oh, Soren, I don't know what to say. Blueprints. Huh? The engine blueprints. I can't find them. Do you know where they are? Wow. Uh, zero self-awareness, buddy. There's a time and a place for mucking around. Now is not the time or the place. Oh, they're in your room. Third shelf on the bottom on the right-hand side. Ah, I see. Great! Thanks for stopping by, buddy! No reason, no other reason in the world for you to be here right now. Nope, none whatsoever. Don't tell me he came to just ask about some stupid blueprints. Is he really that cold of a person, or is that just how he comes off? I wonder. <laughs> what about me, Soren? Alan. He's back. Come home soon. I'm lost without you. Well, that was fast. We're only two minutes in and we're already at the waterfall. Later. But what? The, the, hey, you're on trial for murder. You're, you're, my my, my to-be wife is on trial for murder. Uh, uh come home soon. Later, dude. We'll <laughs> see, see you later, buddy. What? <laughs> Looks like showing your vulnerabilities is the fastest way to capturing a woman's heart. That was his vulnerability? The whole, later, that's it, real, that's the best you got. You should take notes on this, Nick. What? Please leave me out of this. Anyway, it looks like Soren isn't big on words. Oh, gee, you don't say. It's clear that he cares about Ellen. Is it now? Are you sure about that? Knowing that I actually kind of feel relieved. I, I, I don't think you know what care about someone means. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you, you might want to look up more about what it means to actually care about somebody because, oh boy, stop by to say, come home soon. Like, come home soon. God, what are you doing here? Later. Later, dude. Totally radical, bruh. Mr. Wright, I just absolutely can't be found guilty, you hear? Don't worry, I'm gonna do everything I can to prove your innocence. Thank you, Mr. Wright. The trial is about to start, sir. Edgeworth. Knowing him, he's not gonna yield an inch. So I've just gotta fight with everything I've got and save Ellen. Okay, facing off against Miles Edgeworth for the first time in forever. September 22nd, 9 o'clock a.m., District Court, courtroom number 6. Day one, court is now on to- Oh, I f- <laughs> I completely f***ing forgot that I just gave Phoenix the meme costume. Court is now on to the trial of Ellen Wyatt. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while now, Your Honor. Ha! <laughs> Seeing there's so many familiar faces gathered together like this, I feel as though I'm at a grand reunion. <laughs> Makes me want to go out for dinner and a drink and reminisce with all of you. Oh, that sounds like a great idea! I was staying for a real burger the whole time I was away! We can make it a welcome back party for Maya. How about it, Edgeworth? I have no intention of cavorting with my enemies. Oh, come on, Edgeworth. Nothing you want. Let us stop this trial at once. Oh ho! Still not one for lighthearted banter, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm. Jokes and good humor are beyond worthless in the court of law. Guess we'll just have to have the party with that and then. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure he'll join us. How about we worried after the conclusion of this trial? Ah, yeah, that's what I thought. I might consider joining you for your little welcome back party. I certainly wouldn't mind an invite at the very least. <laughs> He's still as emotionally constipated as ever, I see. Yep, that's our Edgeworth. No, no, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please go over the details of this case for us. The victim was Dumas Gloomsbury, a servant of the Sprocket household. He was in attendance at the wedding reception that occurred from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Mr. Gloomsbury apparently felt some animosity toward Ellen Wyatt, so a bit after the reception ended at 10 p.m., he assaulted Miss Wyatt with the intent to kill her. The defendant fought back and ended up killing Mr. Gloomsbury. Hmm. In other words, it was justified self-defense, correct? If that's the case, then the defendant might be not be criminally responsible. He's right. Worst case scenario, I could go for self-defense to avoid the criminal charge. One who always plans to counter that, though. The prosecution's first witness will make my view on the matter clear, Your Honor, meaning you have no idea. 
You have absolutely no idea. Very well, very well. Please bring in the first witness. It sounds like I'm smiling like an idiot right now, but that's because I am. Just because it's it's Phoenix and Edgeworth back at it again. Emma! With, with my as the assistant, Emma is the star witness, and the judge. The real judge, not not fake judge over in Kingdom of Quran. Please don't name an occupation witness. Emma Sky, forensic investigator. That was easy for Edgeworth. And I just like to say, sir, that being in the same corner as there's that music! Also, what a wonderful bit of character development. Because back in Rise from the Ashes, when Emma first showed up in Edgeworth and and uh, Edgeworth's office, she was like gushing over the moon with excitement over over meeting Edgeworth in person. So, this is actually a really nice payoff for that. That being in the same courtroom in you is a great honor. Hmm. Oh, that's right. You're a fan of Edgeworth, aren't you, Emma? We're good friends and all, Mr. Wright. But just this once, I intend to faithfully and fully testify for the prosecutor. Just this once. Literally none of the other times. Clavier, nah, f that guy. Uh, prosecutor Samadhi, double f that guy. And I do mean that wholeheartedly. <laughs> I expect a risk from you. Yes, sir, I'm gonna do my very best. Looks like you lost the popularity contest, Mr. Edgeworth, Nick. Nah, I could really, uh, I really couldn't care less. Besides, she'll see who's the better lawyer once I win this trial. Yeah, maybe then you'll actually really care less. Now, Detective Sky, if you please. Witness testimony. Okay, run down of the case. Let's do it. The murder weapon was the clock called the Timekeeper. The victim was hit with it from behind and he fell over right into the lantern. Um, that doesn't sound right. Hold on, let me look at the photo again. The, the photo that we took of his body in the thing, photo victim. That, oh yeah, that, no, that's, that's, that doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, so. Number one, if you're hit from behind, you fall forwards, not backwards. Number two, if he fell right into it, then why would there be debris on top of him? All the debris would be below him, not on top of him. So, that's just a straight up no. Venom was spotted then standing in front of the body while holding the murder weapon. The victim was struck twice, by the way. And we're already off to a great start. I, I, this costume, I just, look, I, I know I'm the one that put it on Phoenix, but I mean, come on. He was struck twice. That's right, there's no mistake about it. The first blow was to the back of the victim's head. It was hard enough to knock him unconscious. Yet despite the fact that he had been immobilized by the first blow, the defendant delivered a second, fatal blow to the side of the victim's head. Which means what exactly? Hmm, I figured it would go right off your head. Let's put it this way, by striking the victim a second time, the defendant killed her last chance to escape from any criminal wrongdoing. She did, but I'm Mr. Edgeworth. The defendant may have been fighting back because she was being attacked. However, she then went on to deliver a fatal blow to a man who was already fully unconscious. Nick, is he saying what I think he is? I don't feel so well. And thus, Mr. White, has justified, has justified self-defense been removed from the table. The prosecution intends to prove that the defendant killed the victim with murderous intent. Allow it to be belatedly submit the victim's autopsy report. And, and not updated ever again after this point. Ah! Well, that was well, so that's what he was acting all smug. Well, more smug than usual. It's fine, right? It's not like we were gonna play self defense anyway, right? Right, but now the judge has a negative impression of Ellen. <laughs> he may not get to prosecute much anymore, but he definitely hasn't lost his touch, that's for damn sure. Also, see your four glints right here, show signs of being hitting twice the timekeeper's use of the murder weapon. Oh boy. Now that was you may begin your cross examination. So, in, in case you missed yesterday's episode, um. Two things, I, I should have mentioned one of these things at the start of the episode, is that if there's any game that you want to see me play next, because after I finish Spirit of Justice, we're going to move on to something else. So I, if there's any game you want to play, any any genre, any platform that you want to see me cover for the next Let's Play, comment down below. I'm still taking suggestions over the weekend, I'm going to decide, and then I'll make an update video next week to kind of talk about what the next big Let's Play is going to be. So I'm still taking suggestions for that. Two, if you missed yesterday's episode, in the regards to the time travel thing, the main theory that we have, the, the working theory right now, is that the ceremony was held twice. Like, she was being attacked, she was knocked unconscious, and then woke up later in the day, and they redid the ceremony. And the, the only problem with that, aside from millions of other things, is that, why would anybody do that? Like, what... 
what would be the purpose of holding the ceremony twice other than to frame her for murder? And the only thing I can think about framing her for murder was that the, the family of Soren wanted her out of the family. Except that if that was the case, there's like a million different ways you could do that easier than literally holding the ceremony twice. Like, okay, let's... I, I don't know. Well, it's a working theory. We'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. But first and foremost... Uh... No. Just... Just, just no. Objection! Detective Sky, I'm afraid I have to apologize in advance. For what? For embarrassing you in front of your idol. Well, what do you mean? If you take a look at this photo of the crime scene, you'll see the victim's lying on his back. But if the victim had been hit from behind as you claimed, then he should have fallen over into the lantern face down. Ah! It's not enough to simply take someone's side, Detective Sky, even if it's, even if it's Mr. Edgeworth's. Ah, oh. Hmm, that, that does appear to be a flaw in the Hector Sky's testimony. Mr. Wright, if you think I'm going to just back to right down, you are sadly mistaken. I would not I would not have expected you to. Emma's unusually fired up to the- yeah, because she's testifying for Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget she's in front of her hero, Nick! If, if a still samurai came to watch this trial, I want to do my absolute best, too! Uh, I mean, well, we, we did kind of defend the steel samurai in a case in the first game, but- Listen, Mr. Wright! It's entirely possible the defendant moved the victim's body after he fell over. In that case, there wouldn't be any contradiction, right? No, because- no, 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 wrong. Indeed, that was an exigent contra-argument. No, 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 I, I don't think you understand. Y you don't- if you move the body, then the body would be placed on top of the rubble. But there's rubble on top of him in the photo! I- Is it possible that- The victim's- no, 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 it, it was it definitely not possible. Sorry, Hector, but there's no way the victim's body was moved after his death. Oh, really? What makes you so sure? Uh, the, how about the fact that there's debris all over his chest? Oh, well, look at this here and it should become obvious. If, if the body was moved here, it would be on top of the debris, not underneath it. The, those bits, broken bits of the lantern? Yes, if the body had been moved after the fact, these fragments would have fallen off of it. But as you can clearly see, they're lying perfectly undisturbed on top of the body. This means that the victim must have been lying face up from before the lantern even broke. But wait a minute, if that's true, then when was the victim killed? I mean, the lantern was still whole during the reception, right? Right, which means we've just overturned a major assumption about this case. If the victim was already dead before the lantern was even broken, then the body must have been inside the lantern since before the reception started. In other words, the defense asserts the victim was killed before the wedding reception. In short, when Miss Wyatt was seen standing in front of the body after the reception, it wasn't the moment just after the murder was committed. It was the moment she happened to discover the body, just as Miss Wyatt claims! Objection! Oh... Oh, I, I forgot that they gave Edgeworth bitter old man voice for his objection. Ugh. Hmm. Whether the act was committed before or after the reception is entirely in consequential. After all, it was the defendant who prepared the reception hall for the event in question. Therefore, when the murder occurred, she did nothing with regard to her guilt. She could have killed the victim before the reception as she claimed, and then tried to hide his body in the lantern after the event ended. Objection! Sorry, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, where would the body have been hidden during the reception in your scenario? Ooh, lots. Ever, even you had to admit, Mr. Edgeworth, that this has opened up a new possibility. Do explain, Mr. White. Well, if Miss White didn't commit the crime in the reception hall, then that means someone somewhere put the victim's body into the lantern. Hmm, I suppose that makes sense. A dead body couldn't have put itself in there. Exactly, Your Honor. In other words, if the murder actually occurred before the reception, knows of the possibility that he was killed somewhere else. If the body was hidden inside the lantern, then it, it's possible the body was moved along with it from somewhere else. Oh, you're right! You can, you can run that mouth of yours all you want. But do you have any evidence to support what's coming out of it, Mr. White? I mean, there's petals on top of him, so yeah, it would make sense. Of course I do. I think the answer lies in the piece of evidence and in something. That was left at the crime scene that was pointing us to where the victim was really killed. Very well story in that case. What proves that the lantern and the body were moved from somewhere else? Well, I, I don't know how petals would have gotten into the lantern. The photo of the victim again? Yes. I'd like the court to focus on this thing right here. Flower petals, Mr. Wright? These petals are from a kind of flower that were not present in the reception hall. This means they must have gotten into the lantern when it was somewhere else. And just where do you propose this somewhere else to be, Mr. Mart? I propose that this piece of evidence will tell us where the flower petals came from. Uh, well, best guess would probably be the hold, because aren't there... Yeah, the flowers are in here. And also, there's definitely something going on here, because the two... I mean, this is just... Because this, the, like I said yesterday, the, the, this, the, the, the male and female bull lantern thing, when they're... 
there were, I, I can't remember if it was two males or two females, but it was, it wasn't one of each in the, in the crime scene we investigated, so that's definitely gonna have significance at some point. Anyway, uh, this. Please take a look at the flowers in this picture of the hold. Notice how their petals are of the same shape as the petals in the crime scene photo? Hmm, yes I see, they do look to be from the same kind of flower. Hmm, is that really all you've got? A flower is a flower is a flower. They're all the same. I would hardly call what you presented compelling evidence. I'm afraid I couldn't disagree with you more, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm? I gave a flower of this type to my lovely wife once when they were very young, so I can assure you that this is very meaningful and compelling evidence indeed. The soundness of my judgement in this matter is backed by nothing less than pure love. But, but, but your honor. Let's let it go, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear you don't know much about flowers. It's not like you have anyone you'd actually give any to- Oh! That's tough! Maybe you should study up on them, just in case the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> this for the man who only knows the names of three types of flowers. That's highly relevant to the case at hand. I, I love these two so much. The defense asserts that it's highly probable that the victim was killed in the hold. If the body was then placed in the lantern and moved to the reception hall for some reason, it would completely destroy the prosecution's case. Then you mean the body was... Yes, the victim's body was inside the lantern during the entire beautiful wedding reception, while the defendant and her betrothed were celebrating their love! Well, what? Objection. Hmm. Just to talk my work on his honor, but he won't work on me. What are you talking about now? Take a look at all the evidence, and you'll soon see what I mean. Detective Sky, I'm sure you've already figured out what I'm talking about, correct? <laughs> of course, sir. Mr. Wright is the only one here who hasn't. Why don't you leave this to me, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, let's see what you can do. Detective Sky, please give your testimony to this court. Alrighty then. Witness testimony. Here we go. The prosecution's rebuttal. The victim cannot have been killed before the reception. The autopsy report states that the estimated time of death was after the reception. And that estimate time of death is correct. There's no way it could be wrong. Well, that's not as airtight as I was hoping for. It's clear Mr. Gloomsbury was killed after the reception, and that completely contradicts your claim. Hmm, I guess so. Tell me you, tell me you took a look at the... Uh, uh, words are hard. Tell me you took at least a cursory glance at the autopsy report, Mr. White. It appears you've been rested since our last outing. Why don't I suggest you go back and brush up on the basics? Sure, though I must say you're as cocky as ever, Mr. Edgeworth. I beg your pardon. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? I'm just saying I'll let I'll let all go back to the basics if that's what Mr. Edgeworth wants. I'll prove how badly he's underestimating me with a good old-fashioned cross-examination. Very well. Let's see what you let's see you put your money where your mouth is, Mr. Wright. Okay. Well, nothing jumped out at me immediately this time, so I guess we're gonna have to look very closely. Okay. The prosecution's rebuttal. The victim could not have been killed before the reception because the autopsy report states the estimated time that it was after the reception. And that estimated time that's correct, there's no way it could be wrong. So it, it could be wrong if there was something in there that... Oh, 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 wait, 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 uh, the fog machine. Yep, that's it, okay, alright, so my thought process was, so the, the, the time that could be wrong if there was something, because a, a thing that's been established earlier in the game in the writer turnabout was that they used, they used the snow to keep the body cold to falsify the time of death. I think the same thing might have happened here. So using that train of thought, I was like, okay. So if that's the case, then what could have been in there that would have, have been used to help keep the, the body cold? And I remember, aha, the fog machine, a device that uses a device that utilizes dry ice to emit a large amount of thick fog-like vapor. In other words, the dry ice can be used to falsify the time of death. Objection! I admit that the estimated time of death does contradict my theory. Finally, and that means your theory that the victim was killed before the reception is still entirely plausible. Huh? What makes you think that? The killer could have falsified the time of death by using a certain item in the reception hall. Please take a look at this. And what is that contraption, Mr. Wright? It's a fog machine, Your Honor. Used to create a special romantic atmosphere in the hall. Also, I don't- I just got a notification of someone commenting on a YouTube video. I don't know if that shows up in the recording, but if it does, uh, shout out to- Oh, I just got- oh, did I not turn sound off? Huh, I guess I, I guess I didn't I guess I didn't mute notifications before starting the recording. Oh well, well if that notification showed up, then uh, 
Shout out to whoever just commented on that video. I'll get to that as soon as I finish recording this. It's a fog machine, Your Honor. Used to create a special romantic atmosphere in the hall. But this machine could have been used to falsify the time of death? Yes, Your Honor, because this machine uses dry ice to perform its magic. Dry ice? Oh yes, the super cold stuff commonly used to bake theatrical fog, right? I see, so your claim is that the dry ice was used to keep the body cold? Oh, in that case, I guess the victim could have been killed before the reception. Order! Order in this court! Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this development? That the victim was killed in the hole before the wedding reception. The prosecution acknowledges the possibility of this claim. Now we're getting somewhere. The prosecution would also like to thank you, Mr. White. Huh? For what? I didn't know how a certain piece of evidence fit into this case, but now, thanks to you, I do. What piece of evidence? To get into the hole, one needs a key card, like this one. And here, we have a record of those who enter the hole with such key cards. We have Doom and Gloom, Persnickety, and Ellen Wyatt. The times aren't specified, but these are the last three entries on the day of the murder. And as you can see, the last person entered the hole that they was- Well, uh, no, because Larry- because as we established yesterday, we Larry used her key card to get in there, so that's 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 a big old nope. So the one who moved the body out of the hole must have been Larry. That's right, it was none other than the defendant. Well then true record added to the court record. Okay, yeah, great, but Larry used her key card, so that means diddly do. Hey Nick, let's take a look at this entry record. The couple of other names in here besides Ellen's. Hey, you're right. According to the entry record, Mr. Edgeworth Persnickety pers pers had also gone into the hole. Isn't it possible that he could have been the culprit? <laughs> Sorry, but Mr. N Mr. Mr. Nickety was escorting a few of the guests at the time. I'm sure they would ha be happy to testify to that fact if you'd like. They'd be cocky all you'd like, Mr. Wright, but my confidence is rarely misplaced. Ah. Uh. Now then, it's probably safe to assume that after killing the victim in the hole, the defendant moved his body to the hole in order to dispose of it discreetly. What do you mean by discreetly? I, I think he means discreetly. The defendant volunteered to take care of the receptions clean it personally. That means she would have had the chance to dispose of anything any way she wanted, including taking the lantern off the airship without raising any suspicion. Don't tell me you didn't know about Miss White volunteering for cleanup duty, Mr. White. Gah! Look at you, sweating buckets like a rookie, even after all these years. Nevertheless, thank you for proving that the only person who could have killed the victim in the hold is... Ellen White! Ah! No, Larry used her keycard. Great job, Phoenix, now we're back to square. No, we're not. We're just not, though. Th this is meaningless. We, we know Larry used that key card. We found his wallet there, so just you're just wrong. <laughs> Pop should ask Miss Sykes for some help in reviewing defenseful dummies. Oh, come on, Edgeworth. Way to go, sir. You got some Mr. Wright in a cold sweat. Hmm. I wonder if maybe the promise of seeing that Mr. Burlock on his face is what brought me back to court today. It certainly made all of my stress and moves as Chief Poskino just milked away. Guess he has a lot of stress built up. I'll give him something to stress over before we're through today. You all know the prosecution asks you that you render your verdict at this time. Before that man over there tries to throw the court into chaos with his meaningless bluffs. Hmm, I see, Mr. Wright. Are there any last meaningful bluffs you'd like to present to this court? Uh, why does he have to assume it'll be a bluff? Nick, hurry and throw a good one out there! I will, I will. Well, alright then, let's see. I got it. How do you know it was Miss Wyatt who used her keycard? After all, if it turns out that somebody else used her card, it wouldn't mean Miss Wyatt didn't do it. Interesting. I know you were able to prove this bluff to be true. I assure you I'm not bluffing, Your Honor. Well, now what? Wait a minute, Nick. I can think of a certain somebody who- Yeah, at least someone finally figured it out. Remember? The one who was sneaking around in the hole in spite of not being a family member? Oh, that's right. Your Honor, the defense would like to call a certain witness to the stand. I needed the testimony of this person who may have entered the hole with Miss Wyatt's keycard. He was on the first page, wasn't he? Of course he was on the first page. Take that! The factual witness? Are you saying that that numbskull was on the airship? You never breathed a word about that to me. That's not surprising because Mr. Nickety told him to keep quiet about it. But Mr. Buttsub himself admitted it to me. He claimed to have found a way to sneak into the Flying Chappelle's hole to see Miss Wyatt. This photo he took and gave to me is proof. Uh, th then was it he who moved the lantern with the body inside to the reception hall? You know as well as I that with him, anything is possible. And this is one possibility that we should definitely look into. I can't believe this. What in the world is he doing mixed up in this? Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. Remember what we've been saying since elementary school? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Yep. Exactly. Ah, oh, that Larry will pay for this. Well, if you want to extra extract your payment now, he's right up there in the gallery. Fair enough. She's the witness before he makes her own for it. No! What's this? What's happening to me? Sorry, Larry, but you brought this on yourself. 
Let us break for a 15 minute recess. I ask that both sides prepare for the next witness testimony during this time. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, this is... This is honestly also a pretty good start so far. We haven't had to broach the subject of time travel yet, so... Let's hope we can keep going with that streak. Anyway. Wow, it's been a while since I've had this much fun and excitement! I face off against Mr. Edgeworth, a hair entire block for the defense! Phew, I'm exhausted already. Hey, Athena's here! I was honestly really worried that they were just gonna... kinda... pretend that she didn't exist for the rest of the case. I'm here for moral support! Athena, are you all done practicing for Trucy's magic show? Well... To be honest, I sort of ran away. Well, that's because she was putting my life in danger, I tell you. I see. I think I'll need to have a one-on-one -on -one with her. You're really as athletic and fit, Athena, so Trucy probably thinks she can run you ragged. That may be true, which is why not even Trucy can keep up with me when I run at full speed. <laughs> huh? Well, you spoke too soon, Athena. Never want to face the resourcefulness of a great magician. Huh? <laughs> Magic Girl just right is on the scene. No! No, Athena! It's not a practice human co- you a human- What?! Human combustion magic?! Come on, dodge yourself on this game. Go what?! What kind of magic show are you doing?! Is it a torture show? What is going on over there?! But don't worry, it's a magic show also, it's perfectly safe- Oh yeah! Douse- just- Dousing yourself in gasoline with- and then setting yourself on fire is perfectly safe. Come on. <laughs> Hey, you're not getting off that easily. Okay, so this is gonna be a running gag. All right, that's fine. Ha! They get along so well, don't they? It reminds me of the good old days. You, me, and Pearly. Oh, and then you can't forget him. Game! What are you doing to me? You're even conscious of it. You're like, hey, remember those good old days in the original trilogy? You know, when it was just you, me, Pearly, and Detective Gumshoe investigating and solving crimes? Yes! Yes I do, game! Oh my god. We, all, we had all kinds of fun the crime scenes back then, remember? Leaving me to do all the serious investigating was over. That's not true, they helped out a lot. We'll be back in session soon, Mr. Wright. Right, thank you. So the next witness, right? Can't wait to see what happens. Sadly, I can already imagine it. <sighs> this game is even conscious of the fact that we all want Gumshoe back. The se September 20th, like, they, they, cause they alluded to him in Turn About Revolution, Turn About, Turn About Revolution, where I presented a, my attorney's badge to Edgeworth, and he's like, that person will have to look out for the next salary review, but now they're literally referring to him by name, so it's like, oh boy. Hello, Larice Denim. Oh, how I've missed you on the witness stand. Court will all reconvene. Nick, Edgy, so you were gonna hang me out to try, aren't you? No, not the both of us, just Mr. Wright. Nick, how could you? I don't really think he did it, of course, but I gotta use whatever leads I can. Mr. Butts, it's a possibility you moved the lantern that had the dead body in it, so if you want to clear yourself of any suspicion, all you have to do is testify. Now then, your testimony, please, witness. Nick, you big, fast, stinking jerk! How can you talk your best bud? We've known each other since elementary school! Well, get this, pal, friendship's over! Ah, uh, that's cool, that's perfectly alright with me, but, um, y you didn't give me anything useful. That, that's not a testimony, that's you complaining to me. Well, go ahead, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Why me? You're the one who called him to the stand, it was your responsibility. Thanks, old chum. Get out of here, show me a little respect, even just a shred. No, absolutely none, you don't, you don't even deserve a shred. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. I would if there was any testimony to cross-examine. Okay, I'm just gonna press everything and hope that something pops up because, oh boy, was that a terrible testimony. Nick is a jerk face. Nick, you big back singing jerk! Come on, Larry, can't you please give me something real to work with? The thing I don't know about your tricks! If I say something careless, you're gonna show me some evidence of me with a loud- Don't do it again, Larry, don't- I- uh, Larry, I thought we- I thought we went over this yesterday, I told you not to do it again, and then you did it again, you broke the rule, and now I'm just gonna keep pressing you to the ends of the earth. And if I get more guilty, how are you gonna take responsibility for what you've done? Why should I take responsibility for just doing my job? You are this journey have any compassion for me? I kinda lost that compassion a long time ago. How can you do your best fault with knowing such an elementary school? Yeah, you, you, you know how- this, this whole series is your fault, by the way. You're the one who stole Phoenix's lunch money. If you didn't do that, none of this shit would have happened. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, it wasn't Mr. Wyatt that entered the hole with that card. Then you're the most likely suspect. Nick, are you seriously done in the- Oh my god, dude. What is wrong with you? Well, technically, yes, but it isn't personal, I assure you. Oh, your friend will believe me no matter what. Can't you see my tears? Don't leave me anything to you. Nick, Nick. 
You don't really think you can cry your way out of this, do you? Okay, fine, in that case. Oh, is he actually gonna give me testimony now? Testimony? Well, get the spell first if it's over. And here I was thinking he was actually gonna give me a testimony. Good God. Larry, listen to me. Shut up, I'm not talking to you anymore. Well, then give me... T oh, my God. This is getting us nowhere. You don't say. But there's no contradictions for me to point out, so what else do you want me to do? Come off it, Larry. If you don't quit fooling around and start testifying, Miss White will be found guilty. For real? If no new information comes out of this cross-examination, then yes, Mr. Butts, for real. Not that I would have a problem with that myself. Larry, just tell us the truth already. Did you or didn't you go into the hole and move a lantern up to the reception hall? I... I never moved any bull lantern, I'll tell ya! Bull lantern? What, did I say something weird? You told me you didn't attend the wedding reception. Uh, yeah, so what? Then that's odd. No one in this courtroom ever mentioned that the sex of the lantern that was moved. So how could you know that it was a bull lantern? You didn't have to actually go to the reception to know that! Anyone can tell there were two peggables, but, uh... Is that true? Uh, no. No, no, you couldn't tell that. It, it, it explicitly states it's a peg account and a peggable. The only- no, the, that's you, wrong. All I can tell you now is that there's a strong sense of bull in the air, right? Oh, that's tough. Please that I'll say many testimony, Mr. It's finally a contradiction for me to point out. Anyone can tell there were two peggables looking at Flying Chapel's, Flying Chapel's pamphlet? Objection! Nope. I want you to take a look at this, Mr. Butts. Because unfortunately for you, the pamphlet clearly shows a peg account and a peggable in their example diagram of the reception hall. Huh? But on that day, instead of putting a peg account and peggable off of the bride and groom, there were two male peggables on display. Mm. Yet somehow, you knew there were two peggables in the reception hall that day. There's only one way you know something like that, Larry. It was you who moved the peggable to the reception hall, wasn't it? No! Larry, you didn't! Mr. Butts, did you move the lantern containing the victim's body to the reception hall? Everyone that's what it looks like! What? Wait, Nick! You don't think I'm the murderer, do you? Maybe you and Mr. Glimsbury were fighting over Miss White and you ended up killing him? Man, I'm Maya, not you too! Look, I didn't sneak in the reception, but that's as far as it went! You know me, I wouldn't hurt a fly! You snuck into the reception. Yeah, it's true, but some of the sparking men caught and locked me up in one of the cabins. It was pretty awful, actually. That's what I mean, that drawing of the pterodactyl I showed you, Nick. Ixnay on the aerodactyl day, Larry. Mr. White, not even you would take this false for that fall, would you? We are talking about Larry. What do I do? Do I accuse Larry? No, of course not. He, he doesn't... He's... He, I... Larry... No, just... Just no. No, you're right, Mr. Richards. Mr. Butts never reason to kill Mr. Gloomsbury. He might have had an imaginary reason to kill Soren Sprocket, sure, but not Mr. Gloomsbury. After all, I did steal Mr. Sprocket's bride and try to elope with her. It's because I tried to steal somebody's bride and make me a murderer. I believe you, Larry, and I don't think you killed anybody either. You would never do anything like that. Nick, old buddy, old pal, I knew you'd come through for me. Yeah, you, we're, not, we're not done here yet, Larry. Funny that, considering your sworn testimony just now that we were, though. Mr. Butts, it's time you told us quote the whole truth, understood? Finally. Witness testimony. Okay, moving the lantern. Just like Nick said, I'm the one who moved the lantern. I was wondering the reception hall before the main event saw the lantern was broken. There was a note that said exchange with the one in the hold, Ellen. So I started to do Ellie a favor. Oh, that, that was a lot to take in. So you switched the lanterns before the reception, did you? Then that means the victim really was killed before the reception. Broken lanterns updated in the court record. It would appear that Mr. Butts completely fell for the defendant's scheme. Scheme? What scheme? This note from the defendant exchanged with the one in the hole, Ellen. Mr. Butts moved the lantern because, with the body in it while to the reception hall because of this note, and thus he has become a suspect in Mr. Grimsbury's murder. Well, that second lantern didn't feel pretty heavy, but I never thought thought there was a dead body in it. <sighs> what would a note like that doing on a lantern in the first place? You got it all wrong, Mr. Edwards. I left that note for myself. It was simply a reminder because I can be very forgetful. What a sorry excuse, Miss Wyatt. The prosecution contends that this note shows one facet of the defendant's murderous plan. And you, Mr. Butts, you played right into the wise Mr. Wyatt's hands. No, Angie, I don't believe it! 
Do you still really believe Miss White to be the culprit, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, of course. My stance on the matter remains unchanged. If you think I'm wrong, then prove it with your cross-examination. Gladly. Very well, Mr. White. You may, you may cross-examine the witness. Okay, here we go. Cross-examining Larry again, except this time there's actually substance to it. Who would have thought? Moving the lantern. Okay. It's just like Nick said, I'm the one to move the lantern. Okay, you're admitting to it. I've spoken about this all before the main event saw the lantern was broken. There's no one that's had exchanged with the hold and the one to hold Ellen, so I decided to do Ellie a favor and move it for her, but, like, why though? Nobody saw you the whole time when you were switching the lanterns? Nobody got caught, not that time anyway. Not that time? Yeah, but I tried to sing in the switching all the first time. I didn't have as much luck, those sparking guys spotted me and nabbed me. Why? All my words are failing me right now. Pretty exciting, don't you think? Like, it's one thing to say, hey, go away, you don't belong here, but to physically, like, to send four people after to just smother you? Like, why? Larry, you need help. And then they lock me up in one of the cabins, and also that, why? And what are you asking about stuff like this for, anyway? So you be trying to prove that there's Well, I'm just confused as to why they care too much about why you were there. Mr. Butt's trying to crash the reception and subsequently getting locked up in a cabin. I believe that these might be important facts in this case, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please have the statement to your testimony. I tried to sneak into the reception hall, but I got caught up and locked up. Got caught locked up in a cabin. So you got locked up. Then what happened? I broke out. Then I started looking for Ellie and in the reception hall again. That's when I saw the broken lantern and replaced it. Wait. I mean, if even as they caught you and locked you up, you still went looking for Miss Wyatt. Hold on a minute. What is it, Nick? My, doesn't something seem weird to you? They're saying you replaced the lantern after we broke out of the cabin. Yeah, no, that doesn't make any sense because it happened before the reception. That's right, no, wait, huh? You're right, it doesn't make sense, does it? Mr. Wright, have you found an to see the witness's statement? Yes, I have. I believe so, Your Honor. Mr. Butts moved the lantern after we broke out, but that contradicts with. Oh, this! Take that! Is that. Yes, it's the broken lantern, Your Honor. Mr. Butts, what you're saying doesn't make any sense at all. What? Why not? You saw you saw the lanterns before the session began, right? Yeah, that's what I said, isn't it? And in fact, you know what? That that's it, isn't it? That this is gonna be the. Th I, I think I, I think I might have been right. Because where we're going here is he moved it before the reception, but it wouldn't make sense because he said he saw the ones after he got locked in a cabin trying to sneak into the reception. And I think this might be the evidence that we need to to suggest the idea that the, that the ceremony might have been held twice. But if that's the case. Why did that happen? In other words, you're saying you swapped the lens before the both the reception and after the reception took place. Hmm, this doesn't make any sense, does it? But Mr. Butts, did you swap the lens before or after the reception? Um Which was it? Before or after? That's a weird difference between the two. Well, Mr. Butts. I guess I can't expect you guys that you to understand. In a nutshell, it was both before and after the reception. What? I'm trying to sneak into the first reception you got Yup, the first reception. Yup, that's exactly what I said yesterday. Then did the power valley spend it? Time got rerouted. We went back to the time before the reception. I, I okay, never mind. I guess we aren't going down that route. It was that. It was that time when I placed the lantern. So it was before the, before the reception. After the reception, get it? We went back in time before the, before the reception. <laughs> this will be the point where everyone starts cackling maniacally in, in this courtroom. Mr. White, what in the world is this witness talking about? Has he developed some sort of intellectual name that I'm aware of since last all last? Um, well. None of the sparkles seem to remember the times, but I do! And Ellie remembers it too! I think the power of our love for each other made the miracle happen! Mr. White, I'm sorry, but could you please translate this message gibberish to the rest of us so we can understand? So now I have to be the one to explain about the whole, uh, explain the whole time travel thing? Looks like you don't have much to choice, Nick! To heck with that, I can't lose any more of my dignity today anyway. The defendant, Miss Ellen Wyatt, has told the defense the following strange story. She said that after the reception ended, she was attacked by Mr. Gloomsbury. She claimed that as she was being assaulted, she made a wish upon her pendant. Please take me back, back to that blissful moment. In doing so... Fucking hell. Time apparently we wound itself to just before the reception began! No! Please no! I'm really hoping that where we're going with this is that there were two receptions. Because I'd, I'd much rather try to figure out why the family would have held a second reception than figure out how time travel works in this universe. I'd much rather do that first one. Trust me. It, it what? I know it's hard to believe, but think about it this way. 
So through the power of the pendant, both Ellen White and Larry Butts experience time travel. Whoa, 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 what? Yeah, no, th this is this is just no, just wrong. I, w w we're not going down this route. What an absolute rubbish, Mr. White. I've heard of, I've heard my fair share of your nonsense over the years, but this takes the cake. How have you thoroughly lost your mind? But this simply is simply the conclusion I came to using that logic ability you love so much. W what? The truth of the matter is the future president of Sprocket Aviation, Soren Sprocket, has been researching time machines. So what if a time machine had already been successfully created? And what if that's one of Sprocket Aviation's top secret inventions? I swear to god, if we're actually doing this, a time machine? You even saw something while you were time traveling! So I turned out to go flying through the sky. No, you didn't! That was the map! Maybe the airship was set to travel through time for the honeymoon trip? No, I, this is a, a pterodactyl! You can't possibly have any evidence to back up your ridiculous time travel story. Well, I, uh... Hmm, as I thought. In any case, I now have evidence to prove that you're no more intelligent than Larry. <laughs> oh, God. That's, that's a low, low. Not so fast, dude. You have the same old, not the same old Larry used to know. Oh, really? You're, oh, yeah, well, I forgot. You're worse now. Oh. I talked to you it's the third time. Oh, ugh. Larry, I, 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 apparently you didn't get my warning the first two times. Okay, this is the time to play Reset Music. What? What? Larry, I can't believe you- Well, anyway, good job. If we compare the photos of the first and second receptions and find a difference, then we'll be able to prove- Well, if I were a betting man, I'd say that it's probably gonna be the, the type of flowers that were there. So, photo- well, where, what, what, what would you compare? Uh... Photo reception, and then okay. So in the photo reception, yeah, th those flowers don't match. Th those flowers do not match these flowers in the slightest. So there's a the difference right there. But do you really think such a difference exists? Yes, Your Honor. I just need to t some time to find it for you. This is preposterous. Very well. Pretty sure the court wants different then. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep, they're very different. Proof positive. The wedding reception mail took us. These these flowers are red. And the ones that we saw in the first photo were yellow. Take that. Please direct attention to Miss Wise's bouquet of flowers. In this photo, one of her in-laws took the defendant is holding a yellow bouquet, and Persnickety is very unhappy in the background. But also, here comes the swell of the music. Wait, wait, wait for it. You're right. That's impossible. What? What does this mean? It means that the defendant really did experience two wedding receptions, and she did that with no. Uh, what? And he was just ready to commit die over there. He's just like, what is going on? Nick, you did it. You proved Alan's time travel story. But no, I, I proved that the wedding reception had been held twice. Proving that and proving time travel are very different things. Yeah, I can hardly believe it myself. I just as Alan said, the reception was held twice. Yes, this turns every reception we base this trial on upside down. I refuse to say such a ludicrous argument. It is pure fiction under the guise of pseudoscience at best. There is simply no such thing as time travel. I know it's hard, but can't you suspend your disbelief for one nanosecond, Edgeworth? I bet slap and movies push all your buttons the wrong way, don't they, Mr. Edgeworth? I can totally picture you yelling, that never happened every five seconds of the screen. They usually stay away from the movie dates all together. That need, that's neither here nor there. This is real life we're talking about. But the proof is clearly shown in the two photographs. That's right, Mr. Edgeworth. Fine, I'll entertain your absurd delusion. If only you would demolish it before your very eyes. What? Let's start with this then, shall we? There is one thing your time travel theory fails to explain. And that is the memories of the older guests there. The defendant and Larry remember the rece reception to coming twice, but no member of the Sparkle family has even mentioned such a thing. That'd be- I'm not done, you bird brain. <laughs> bird brain? As I was saying, if the entire family had been sworn to secrecy, then why hadn't they sworn the woman who was marrying into the family to secrecy too? Th that's a good point. Honestly, all it takes is a little common sense, Mr. At least someone has some brains in this room. But also, all we proved is that there were two receptions. We didn't prove anything else. Now, why were there two receptions is a good question. But again, I'd rather figure that out than try to figure out fucking time travel. How do we know that the trip through time did not really occur? There was proof in the photos that it did. No, there, no, that's not. I'm being honest, wondering, frankly. You were also allowed to be taken in by Mr. White's whimsical tales, Mr. Warner. I've read about it in your various literature, you see. 
and they all say that time travel is just not logically feasible. Nah. <laughs> maybe your art, maybe argument is just a little too nonsensical, Nick. Gee, you don't say. Well, in that case, why don't we put common sense to the test? Excuse me. The wedding reception was held twice. The photos are proof of that. But it wasn't because of time travel. Thank you. I'm glad someone has brains in this courtroom. It's only because the reception had actually been held twice. There we go. Isn't that the most reasonable way to interpret the situation? Hmm. Would you care to elaborate, Mr. Wright? If time travel doesn't exist, then there's only one way to make sense of what happened. What if all the guests of the reception conspired together to hold the reception twice and keep quiet about it? What? And for what purpose would they conspire to do such a thing? Well, I, 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 that's a good question. Uh... What? Oh, great. Persnickety's back at it again. I can tell you are not a renowned warrior for nothing. I must say I underestimated you. How so, Mr. Nickety? You have managed to name each event precisely as they happened. You have revealed it all to the light of day. Then, then that means... It was us. We all treated the whole thing. Yes, the reception was held twice. But not because of time travel. No, we simply held it the second time. What? Why? Why would you do such a thing? Great question. Now, someone answer it. Quickly now. To make it so the anonymous and committed never happened. Mm. I still haven't figured out that if Miss Ellen, who killed Clumsborough after our first reception, experienced this one more time, she would think it was all a dream. He was he who ordered us to make it happen. However, only a few must have included you in Miss Ellen's crime. Are you saying most of the guests attended two receptions without knowing why? Indeed, they needed a new reason, but the last assault told them to do it, and do, it and they, and do what they did. That is a sprocket way. Then who hid the body in the lantern? We did. But we did not anticipate the pedders finding their way in, not the action to Mr. Butts. I'm not telling you intended to cover the whole situation up. There is just one thing everyone here is wrong. The new scene of the murder was not the hoop, it was the Vista deck. What? Then Miss Wyatt's recollection of the events must be correct. This is quite a turn of events. Well, we freaking called it yesterday. Except that the motive for doing all this bullshit is, uh... Oh boy, this is... Who's cackling now? Oh, of course it's Dudgeworth. And so it appears we have arrived at the truth at last. Now, now. Please do feel free to travel back in time, Mr. White. I'll attempt to do this right over again. Go on. <laughs> Let's not get hasty, Edgeworth. I bet you can't do it. I bet I can't either. Your Honor, we will have to hold a separate trial for this couple of conspiracy later. But as far as this case goes, I believe we are ready for your ruling. Objection! Just before the defendant lost contact of the story in her attack, she says she saw someone strike the victim. It's possible this third party is the true culprit. You still want us to believe the defendant's words. Perhaps you've lost more than your touch during your time abroad. This third person nonsense is nothing but rubbish and you know it. Also, I'm, 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 I'm gonna throw it out here right now. It's probably gonna end up being Soren, because he's like, hey, I mean, if he was that willing to literally hold the ceremony twice to try to brush this, to, to try to brush the murder under the rug, with how nonchalant he was towards Eleanor earlier today, I'm guessing that was more to protect himself than anybody else, so he's probably gonna end up being the true culprit. By the same token, how can we trust those who conspired and lied to the fool this court of law? For all we know, they might still be hiding something. You never know when to quit, do you? No, no, calm down, both of you. In any case, there isn't enough trust with the information yet for me to render a verdict. I suggest we continue the trial after both sides have investigated the matter further. Very ready, Your Honor. Phew, that was close. Mr. Nickety. Uh, as for you and your cohort's attempts to cover up this crime, your case will be brought to, to a separate trial following the resolution of this current one. Understood, Your Honor. Well then, this concludes today's trial. Court is adjourned. Wow, that was actually awesome. That was really, really good. To be continued. Okay, that was impressive. Oh, wait, wait, music, music. Technically, we're not in the clear yet. They could try to defend time travel in the future, but I'm, I think we might have overcome the hurdle. We might have gotten past actually trying to convince people that time travel is real. And if that's the case, we should be smooth sailing for the rest of this, so... I don't know. I'm, I'm optimistic. This, this, is pretty, this is really good so far. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time. And uh, one last reminder, any game that you want me to see me want to see me play next for a Let's Play of any genre on any platform, leave it in the comments, and over the weekend I will pick it and announce the next Let's Play in an update video next week. Until then, thanks for watching, and stay tuned on Tuesday for the next episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice. Goodbye.